Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk a little bit about the discovery and some of the observations that were made over time on the moon, or not on the moon, but about the moon, Io. So it was discovered in 1610 by Galileo. He was the first one to publish his findings, although Simon Marius claimed to be the first one to discover it. He claimed that he discovered before Galileo, but he didn't publish it until several years later. And so therefore Galileo was given credit because he was simply the first one to publish it. And we have no real proof or record that Simon Marius had discovered it earlier. They used the information over time as they were observing the moons to validate Kepler's laws. They also tried to use it to find the speed of light. So as the moon went behind Jupiter, it would, they would time to see how long it would take for Jupiter to come back to the other side and then when it would be seen. So the idea was that if we knew carefully how long it took for the moon to stay behind Jupiter based upon its orbital speed, then we can take that time then we can measure the time or at least calculate the time that it should stay behind Jupiter and then as soon as it became visible how long would it take for the light then to reach the Earth from there. That's how they tried to figure out the speed of light. They had some minimal success although they again realized that light traveled very very fast but it was interesting how even at the early stages of observation they tried to use information like that to, to figure out certain things such as the speed of light. As the telescopes got better in the 19th and 20th century, they began to see large surface features. So they began to see some basic features on, on the moon. And then in the 20th century, they started using spectroscopy. And then they realized that Io was essentially devoid of water ice, which was extremely unusual. So using spectroscopy, we're typically able to figure out what kind of elements are present in large enough quantities. And so they did not find any evidence of water ice being present on Io. The first visit was by Pioneer 10 and 11 back in December of 1973 and December of 1974. Now Pioneer 10 came much closer to, uh, to Io, but trying to take pictures of it uh, ended up in a failure because the data was lost due to the high radiation that was found near the moon. Uh, Pioneer 11, which stayed a little bit further away, was able to take some nice pictures, especially of the polar region, and they did discover the, that there was an atmosphere, and they also discovered there was this enormous radiation belt in the orbit of Io. Then Voyager 1 came in March of 1979 and quickly followed by Voyager 2 in July of 1979. Notice that Voyager 1 came with, within about 20,600 kilometers of the surface, so it was able to take some very nice pictures. Voyager 2 didn't get that close, a little bit over a million kilometers, but of course a million kilometers compared to the distance between Earth and Jupiter, that is quite close, and so they were also able to take some nice pictures. They did find that there was a lot of sulfur dioxide frost on the surface of the planet, oh, planet, moon I should say, and they not only found it on the surface, they also found it in the atmosphere and they found it within the Taurus ring. So they, they figured out that a lot of the material that was either on the surface, in the atmosphere, or around that radiation ring, the Taurus, it was primarily made of sulfur and sulfur dioxide frost. Uh, Galileo, the spacecraft, had a flyby in 1995, and then Cassini on its path to Saturn also went by the planet in December 2000 and was able to take some pictures and some measurements. Now New Horizons that flew by the planet on February 2007 took a picture right here. It actually took five pictures and if you line them up one by one in time you could actually see that there was this enormous explosion from a volcano, this enormous eruption with a plume that went hundreds of miles past the uh, or away from the surface of the moon so we could see that there were some amazing volcanic activity on Io and so that was then um, photographed uh, by New Horizons near the uh, volcano called Tvashtar uh, and that's hard to pronounce. Then in 2016 Juno arrived, it's going to stick around till about 2025, they've extended the mission because the instruments are doing quite well. It did um, infrared, it should be an A, 
Um, it did take some pictures of the surface in infrared during a time that that surface was on the night side, on the dark side of the moon, and then taking those pictures in infrared, we were able to discover that there were lava lakes on the surface. So there was actually lava lakes that are present in volcanoes that we see sometimes on the Earth. Well, we saw the same kind of thing on Io, and they've extended the mission, so they're going to have uh, several more flybys very close to the uh, to Io to again take additional measurements, additional pictures, and additional observation. So there's a lot of a lot of new stuff that's coming in, pouring in, lots of data to be analyzed so we can understand more and more of the moon. Io, very exciting moon for the obvious reasons. It's very volcanically active. It's got amazing compounds, amazing colors. And we found atmosphere, lack of water. There's all these mysteries about the moon. And we're trying to figure them all out by taking more and more measurements. So as the years go by, we'll learn more and more about this fascinating moon.